Boris, our lovable Prime Minister. Um, a lot of them will hate him, don't really care about that. But he did do something last week that caused a bit of a, a stir in, in, the, in the mortgage press, and that was his housing pledges. And, um, you know, if you've been around a few years, you hear these things all the time because a lot of people have contacted me and said, look, Paul, what's happening? You know, is it changing everything? And I said, well, no, it's not. It's never, never going to come to fruition. <laughs> these things never do. Um, so look at it with a pinch of salt. Now, I want to really share with you what he said, why he said it, and what he really should be doing with the housing market because it's really important to do that. So let's talk about his housing pledges. Now, put into context, first of all, he had a no-confidence vote, which is basically his own team telling him that they didn't like him anymore. But they did like him, and that was fine, but quite a few people said they didn't. So he's feeling a bit damaged at the moment. He's quite uh, quite an extrovert, remember, Boris. So he's, he's feeling quite damaged. So he decided to go off and uh, do a speech on housing. Now, why did he choose housing? Well, because housing is a great vote winner, um, particularly amongst his own... MPs, Tory MPs, Tory party membership, they love housing because Maggie Thatcher did this of course back in uh, back in 1980s, 1980 Housing Act was introduced which um, which gave uh, the right to buy and millions of people bought council houses and it kept loads and loads of voters uh, pumping for Maggie and, and the Conservatives for years. So Boris did the same. But what, what he's done is he's done two things. The first thing is he talked about allowing housing benefits to be used as part of a mortgage application. So somebody's on housing benefits, and I did some research, and there's about uh, four and a half million people on housing benefit, one, one extreme or another. And they can use that money as part of their mortgage application, which sounds great. The second one was to give tenants of housing associations the right to buy their house. Not, not councils, they've had that for years but the housing association, they call it the right to acquire. And um, that's what he did, and, and good for him too. He got some good press publicity. But if you examine it closely, it's all wrong really, because the, um, the housing benefit issue, by, by allowing housing benefit to be used as part of a mortgage application, it's not down to Boris to say that. Um, the FCA, the Financial Conduct Authority with MCOBs and lenders, they're the ones who decide what income they can use to support a mortgage application, not Boris. And if they want to use housing benefits, it's up to them. I don't think they will want to do that. Uh, the FCA, of course, have strict rules on affordability assessments for mortgages, and rightly so, and lenders decide themselves. Besides, you'll have to do an awful lot of lobbying with the FCA who are quite busy at the moment with industrial action. You've an awful lot of lobbying to change that. So you can put that one aside. That's, that's, that's not going to happen, is it? The second one, though, was an interesting one. That was to give the right for people who live in housing association properties the right, the right to buy their property. Now, if you dig deeper on this one, that's been around for a while. There was a Housing Act of 1996, which uh, wasn't being clever, by the way. I'm just reading it from my notes. <laughs> the Housing Act of 1996 was introduced, which gave the right to acquire. So it gave housing association tenants the right to buy their property. Because it just did. Did it go down well? Not really. Did many people do it? No. It's not really worked at all. So the law's already there for that. Whether they're going to tweak it or make it easier is up to them. But that's not the problem though. The bigger challenge with UK housing is bigger than that in my opinion. So what I wanted to do is share with you some numbers and stats and all that kind of stuff to share with you where the bigger problem lies. And you'll see it visually, which is really quite interesting. Um, first of all, let me share with you the housing stock situation in this country um, for last year. So I'm gonna to go to some slides now because I want you to, to see these visually, if you like. So the first point to make is that in 2021, the housing stock was 20, just under 25 million homes. So in other words, that's, that's the amount of properties we have in, in the country, which is pretty, pretty good, really. There's a lot of houses, and that's from the Office of National Statistics source. So this is pucker information. Now, if you broke that down into, uh, it's split, as I, as I call it here, it's split in a number of ways. I've got a, a graph here to show you. I've got four categories of the housing stock currently that we have. Let me just highlight these with my little dot there. So the first category is what we call owner-occupied. That's in dark blue. Then we've got private rented, that's renting you know, privately from private landlords. Then we've got rented from housing associations, that's the one where the law came in, or will come in. And then we've got rented from local authorities. Now if you look at the numbers, we've got 64% owner occupation at the moment. In other words, 64% of the housing stock is owner occupied. With or without a mortgage, it doesn't really make a lot of difference. 
Then we've got 20% rented privately. Now, I've rounded the figures up to make them look better, but the fact is that 20% of properties in this country are privately rented. And we know that because it's a big mortgage market, it doesn't buy to let mortgages. But then you've got the um, housing association rentals at 10% and the local authority rentals at 6%. Now that's the current situation. Now, my thoughts are that the housing association, okay, you've got quite a lot of uh, percentage there of people renting from housing associations. But I think they do a really good job. I know a lot of people that work in housing associations, they do a fantastic job. They, they have really good housing. It's warm, comfortable, damp proof, you know, draft free. They've got central heating, all sorts of um, economy issues. And so They're great houses. They create really nice properties. And people who rent them have to go on a list to get in. And they're usually young families and people who deserve them. They don't pay a lot of rent. It's subsidised rent. Housing associations are charities, you see. They're subsidised and run by the government. So I don't really think these people really want to buy their house. I'm not judging whether they do or not. But the fact is they are renting at a very low rent compared to private landlords. And they have good landlords who look after the properties. And there's still 6% or so of um, the rented from local authorities. So that's come down dramatically, isn't it? Now... I want to share with you now the numbers for 20 years ago. And that's the key thing here that, uh, that I want to share with you. So let me show you the numbers from 2000, so 22 years ago, in fact. Same graph to give you the illustration. Now, we had 70% owner occupation then. It's quite surprising, actually, how, how much has that's gone down in the last 21 years. We had 10% private renting. So you can see where, where one's transferred to the other. We had 6% housing associations and we had 14% rented from local authorities. So the numbers have changed dramatically. Now, in my opinion, the problem is here. You've got 10% private rental back in 2000, 70% owner occupation. Now, that's changed dramatically to that. You can see it clearly, can't you? 2021, 20% private rental. I'll just go back a bit for you. 10% in 2000. And to the detriment of that, of course, is local authority buy to let, uh, local authority uh, rental there, you can see 14% has come down as well because more people have bought their right to buy properties over the last few years. And what we now see are these figures. So the problem, therefore, is private rental. Now, it's a good thing, it keeps the mortgage market very busy with buy to let mortgages and things like that. But I think we could certainly be looking at some. Um, options such as uh, the right to buy maybe give, giving tenants the right to buy from their private landlords whether you get that through or not is another issue i think the labor party tried to do that or maybe give them an easier way of moving from private renting to owner occupation because a lot of private renters private tenants want to buy their properties or want to buy a similar property they just can't afford it because of affordability rules but also it's the deposit so there might be a way of the government helping these people to go from private renting to owner occupation, even if they've you know, some sort of subsidy, some sort of government loan system or whatever it is to provide a deposit, to, to increase back the rates of owner occupation, which I think uh, need, need to be put back to where they were. Um, you just have to take a look at the numbers and what they create. Um, I don't want to go too much on the politics side of this thing, but it's quite um, illustrative, isn't it, where you see 2021, and uh, you see 2,000. All you need to do is increase the number of people who own and occupy from 64%, which it is now back up to 70, to the detriment of private rented. You don't need to tinker with local authority renting or housing association renting, because there's always a place for that. There's two and a half million people rent from housing associations, and I think there should be many, many more opportunities for people like that to do that. I want to leave you with the, the, the final sort of statistic, which is quite the alarming one. This one here, I don't know if you read this article back from 2016, but um, apparently 40% of ex-council homes are now in private rental. Now that's just scary, isn't it? In other words, we gave people the right to buy their council homes in the 80s and 90s. We've seen numbers for it. But 40% are now homes in private rental. And what that means, of course, is you've got a private landlord who owns that property, who rents it on the private marketplace. And then therefore they, they, they become the landlord. And I think, I don't know how you look at it, but that's just wrong on all levels, isn't it? I think there should be an element of, of local authority renting because they do, do look after things. But that's what Boris should do. So Boris, there's the idea. <laughs>